This might look like an ordinary university office, but in reality it may actually be one of the most fun places to work in the world. This is the Bristol Interaction and Graphics Lab, where a group of researchers are busy inventing new, unusual and sometimes slightly ridiculous ways of controlling and interacting with computers. This machine produces smoke-filled bubbles that act as tiny projector screens, which could alert you when you receive an email, which rather raises the question, why? Even if it only looks like a very playful uh, project, uh, the thing is that if you look at a little bit at the trend that we are looking into, how we are going to interact in our houses in, in a few years, uh, we always think that uh, you could have like this place a little bit everywhere, a projection a little bit everywhere. Uh, but the thing is that in that way we are constraining you to using like a wall, using a desk, using something to interact. While we have a lot of space around us. The thing is that uh, sense of bubble, what it does, it creates a bubble filled with smoke and that way you can project into it, you can project information. That way the whole air that we have around us in our, in, in our house becomes a display. It's not only that we create the bubbles to detect them, we need to use some sensing technologies. Those sen sensing technologies, you can use them to detect interactions of the users, how they pop the bubble. If they want to crash it, they want to, uh, to see or get more information about it. And in that way, it, it, it doesn't only allow you to present information anywhere in your house, but also it allows you to interact anywhere in your house. Of more obvious practical use is the group's ultra-haptic system, which uses ultrasound waves to allow users of gesture control technology, such as Microsoft Connect, to effectively feel a cursor's position on the screen while they're moving their hand around. We have... Um an array of ultrasound transducers that create a focused ultrasound onto your hand um, that vibrates at a frequency you can feel. So you hold your hand out and as the ball strikes the paddle you get a feeling on your hand. So there's a, a really big move towards touchless interfaces. Um, so you can now already control your games console, your computer, soon you'll be able to control your car all without touching them. But these interfaces all lack the sense of touch, so you can't feel what you're doing. Um, so what our technology does is provide that sense of touch. So if you're controlling the volume in your car, you hold your hand out and you get an immediate feeling for the actions that you're performing. But while Ultra Haptics is already being spun out as a marketable product, other elements of the group's research, such as this holographic screen made from mist, are far more experimental. The group's leader, Professor Sri Subramanian, explains these kinds of projects are as much about exploring how people interact with computers as actually developing new technology. We want to understand, uh, the, and we are not even, we, we are looking at uh, the future, right? So we're looking at uh, 15, 20 years down the road what it's going to look like. We are driven by science and, uh, and driven by a uh, desire to understand the future. So I think we're going to start seeing uh, devices that are much more uh, responsive to your needs in terms of um, being able to change their shape, morph their structures, or provide customized views to you for whatever you want. Uh, and we've gone to touchless interaction, which seems a bit weird to me. I mean, like, uh, you've given up all your uh, sense of control of tactile feedback and all the things to, to be able to interact from a distance. Uh, but people are going to uh, expect soon uh, the ability to use all their uh, senses, right? So you, you can touch and feel, you can see, you can hear, you can smell, uh, and uh, our, uh, we, uh, people will insist that they interact with computers with all those senses in a rich way. And I think uh, that means that we have to rethink the way interaction happens.